Greetings hobbyists, this is Artans of Vool. In this video we're going to talk through some of Blender's standard simple tools and use them to create a range of different objects. So on the channel I quite often like to look at more complex things that we can do in Blender and how to achieve them, but I thought it'd be quite nice to do a video aimed at looking at what we can do with just the very standard tools without using really complex manipulation. And importantly, you can create really great objects just using these standardized tools. So at each point, as I use a tool, I'm going to use this cube just to demonstrate what that tool is before we use it on the overall model, if I think it needs simplifying in any way. Finally, before we start, the only thing that I'm gonna be using here that isn't part of Native Blender is not something you need. It is Machine Tools, which creates this pie. It's a $5 add-on, and I just find it, firstly, faster to be able to jump from face to edge to vertex just using the tab button each time. And it also has a lot of great other tools as well. But you don't need this. I'm mostly using it because it gives you a really clear representation visually of what I'm moving to, though I will talk through it as well. Obviously, you don't need to use this. You can just press one, two, or three after pressing tab or going to the top left-hand corner here to change to different modes. So let's go back into object mode. So the first thing we're gonna do is shift an A and I'm going to bring in a cylinder and we're gonna be making some ammunition. Now, I use this for 3D printing, so I want to make this nice and smooth. So I'm gonna up the vertices there to about 64. At the size that this ammunition is gonna be, that's more than enough, and it's gonna look nice and rounded. If you're doing things for rendering, you may want even less than that. So the first thing we're gonna do is not demonstrate something on this cube, because it's fairly easy to demonstrate with this, and that is to press S, which scales our object, and I'm just gonna press Z to scale it slightly more in the Z axis. So somewhere to about there. Then we're gonna make the ammunition or the bullet that's coming out of the top of this bottom part, which is gonna be the casing. Now to demonstrate how we're gonna do that, what I'm gonna do is use two tools. Firstly, I'm gonna use the inset tool. If I come here and press I, we can see this insetting into our object and we can control the amount that it's inset. And then we're going to extrude that out by pressing the E button, which allows us to either extrude out or extrude in. And we're gonna extrude outwards. So let's just do this on the top of our object. So let's go back into object mode from there. And then here we're gonna go into face mode, select that face, press I, and I only want to inset this a little bit. I just need this to be noticeable. And then I'm gonna press E to extrude this up. Now back into object mode, and I'm just gonna shift and D and then press Y to move this along the Y axis. So we've got a duplicate at this point because I'm gonna have some different ammunition types at the top. But the next tool we're gonna to use is the bevel tool. Now, if I come back to this object, delete that and bring in a new cube. Again, I'll do this each time so we can see it. What we do with the bevel tool is we select any edges that we want, for example, here. So we can select multiple using shift, press control and B, and that will create a bevel. And we can scroll down to the point it's a chamfer or scroll up on our middle mouse button until it's really smooth. Now, one issue that we've got is that if you press S and then scale it in a direction, which is what we've done over here, I'm gonna exaggerate this slightly. If I go into edge mode and do the same thing, you'll notice that bevel becomes much more elongated because Blender works off the sizing or the scaling of our object. If I press N and come over here to where it says item, we have our scale sizes. And we can see in the Z axis that this has been scaled to 3.3 times what it is in the X and Y, which is why it was exaggerated. To solve that, we just press Control and A, and that will reset the scale to all being one. And then if I do the same again, Control and B, you can see we're back to having that nice bevel. Let's just delete that out. And over here, we're gonna do the same thing. We've got our scale messed up, so we're gonna Control and A and press Scale. I'll do it for this one as well, so I don't forget. And then we're gonna come into this top edge, which is already selected. We can either go into face mode and select that face, or we can be in edge mode press Alt select and select that edge, and then we're gonna press Control and B and start beveling this out. Now, if we go too far, you'll notice we get this overlap at the top. We don't want to do that, so we can press C to clamp it and it'll get perfectly to that point. But actually, what I like to do is, if I just start that again, leave a slight gap on the top, like that, which is creating an engon for certain 3D work. If you're doing renders, that is a problem, so you might want to go all the way with C, so you only have triangles, but I find that useful for a variety of reasons, mostly to do with if you apply rotations. So I like to leave that flat face at the top, and I'm gonna scroll up slightly so that each of my edges is relatively square, and it looks quite nice and rounded. And click, and we've got the top of our ammunition. 
So this would work well for something like a sci-fi bolt gun round, or maybe something smaller like a pistol round. We also want something that's going to work as a more typical bullet, so we're going to do some extra things with this. So I'm going to go into face mode, select that face, G, and then Z up, so it's further up. And then once again, I'm going to control and B, notice that moving this upwards, because we're in edit mode, didn't alter the scale. So we're going to press control and B to bevel, and then I'm going to press C to clamp overlap, and make sure that we move to this central point. Now if I do that, you'll notice that we've got a vertex in the center, and if I press G, this causes a problem because there's actually lots and lots of vertices on top of each other here. So we want to do away with that. So all we're going to do is press A to select everything, M, and then merge by distance. And you'll see we've removed all of those vertices that were at the top. This allows me to then select that vertex on the top. And if I press G this time, it moves everything. What we're going to use next is the proportional editing tool. And if I bring in another cube again and then go into vertex mode and select a vertex, if I normally press G, it will only move that vertex. If I activate my proportional editing and press G, you can see we get this circle. And if I scroll my mouse wheel up or down, I can increase how much of an effect this has on the other vertices as well, which is going to be really useful in certain situations. So that's the proportional editing tool. Let's just delete that out, come to this vertex, and with the proportional editing tool on, I'm going to G and Z this up. Now this is not going to have the effect that I want. If I do that, it's going to create a bullet that actually looks pretty good, but I want this to have a more pointed tip. So if I come here, I can change how I want this to work or what I want this fall off to look like, and I'm going to use a root method. So let's G and Z that up, and that's going to create a more pointed bullet. Let's just come up a little bit so we can see that a little bit better. So something like that. Then I'm going to Shift and Z, select all of those points, and G and Z them down, back to where our bullet starts, coming out of the case, and then we're going to change our case. Now to do this, we're going to use a different tool. Let's just quickly demonstrate that tool. So we're going to be using the edge loop tool. If I just go into edge mode or any mode, if I hold my mouse over an edge and press Control and R, it is going to cut that edge in half, as long as those edges are made out of quads. Once we click once, we can move that edge up and down so it doesn't have to be perfectly centered, and then we can click to put it in place. We can also, if I just undo that, press Control and R and scroll up immediately, and that will allow us to put in more edge loops and again to scroll up and down if we want to, or if we want to right click, it'll put it perfectly centered. So we're gonna use that tool here because this is not how ammunition typically looks. It normally has a wider part at the bottom to hold all of the gunpowder. So let's go into edge mode, Control and R, and I'm going to just move to about there. Then I'm going to control an R here. Now this isn't actually the best method to use, but we'll come back to that in a second. And I'm going to move to about there so that we've got two edge loops. Then I'm going to go into face mode, select that face and G and Z it down. Now you'll notice my proportional editing is still on. What I can do is turn that off by coming up here, or I could just, when not doing anything, press the O button and that will deactivate it or O will also activate it. So that's a useful shortcut, though I actually find it doesn't save much time because the O button is all the other way across the keyboard. Let's G and Z that down to about there and then still in face mode, I'm going to press Alt and click on that edge to select all of those faces. I'm going to press S to scale these up slightly, but I'm going to hold down Shift and then Z to say don't scale up in the Z axis. And that's going to allow me to just scale this out. So let's go to about there. And then I think this still needs to be made a little bit longer. So click on that face G and Z and bring that down. And we've got our larger ammunition. Finally, I do want a more detailed version of both of these. So I'm going to select both of them, shift and D to duplicate them, press Y and just drag these slightly over to the side. And we're going to make a more detailed version. Now all we're going to do for that is add on the fact that our ammunition Typically on the casing, we'll have a ridge around the bottom edge, and then it will also have something where the firing pin would hit. Now, it won't actually have a dot in the center, but it will have a slight indent. So let's do that. First thing we're going to do is exactly the same as we did at the top here. I'm just going to press I to inset to about there, and then just E to bring that in the tiniest amount. And we'll do the same thing here. 
Now do note that it gets really tedious going into object mode, coming here, going back into edit mode, or going into face mode. If you want to just swap between items really quickly, if you hold your mouse over that item and press Alt and Q, you'll go into exactly the same mode that you're already in on that object. It's a real time saver. So let's come into this one. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I to inset it and then E to just make that little point where the firing pin is meant to hit. If you do ever want to create used ammunition, you want to create a point further in and then extrude that more. That would be where the firing pin has actually hit and created an indent. And you can also, if you really wanted to, control and B that to make that rounded because the firing pin typically leaves a slightly rounded indent, not a perfect one. I'm gonna remove that because I want this to be non-fired ammunition. Then we're going to be adding in our ridge around the side and we're gonna use exactly the same methods that we've done so far, so no new tools for this. We're just gonna use them in a slightly different way. So I'm gonna control an R, click to add in an edge loop, drag that down. But this time, instead of adding another edge loop and bringing it down, I want this to be the center of my ridge. So what I'm gonna do is control and B to bevel, but because we're beveling on a flat edge, it just breaks this out into different edge loops. I'm gonna scroll down so it's just one, get it to the thickness that I want, say somewhere about there, and then I want to extrude this inwards. Now, if I press E and extrude this, it will extrude it in one direction, which is horrible, breaks the mesh, and is not what we want. Instead, what we're gonna do is press Alt and E, which brings up the extrude menu. And this has a lot of different options. The one that's gonna be important here is to extrude the face along the normals. Normals are basically points that come out of a face or edge or vertex perpendicular to that face or edge or whatever. If I come up here to our top right to our mesh edit, I can actually say that I want to see my face normals. Scroll those up and you can see each face has a normal pointing in 90 degrees. Let's get rid of that. It's quite annoying to constantly have there, or at least I find it is. So we want to extrude inwards. So we're gonna Alt and E, click extrude face along normals, and then just drag. We could go outwards, but we want to go slightly inwards. So that is gonna be our more detailed ammunition. We're gonna do the same for this one really quickly. So once again, any mode, so edge mode, Control and R, click, drag it down to the point we want, Control and B, to bevel that with just one bevel, so scroll as far down on your mouse wheel as you can. And even though we're in edge mode, if I control an E and extrude faces, it knows that we're doing it for the faces, we can drag that in. So we don't actually need to be in face mode as long as we've got all those edges selected. So there we go. That's our simplified ammunition and our more detailed ammunition using a range of simple tools in Blender. And I actually think this needs to be extended out slightly. So let's go into vertex mode having select both of them x-ray mode with control and z and then g and z those up slightly there you go that's a bit better and that completes us creating our simple and more detailed ammunition using some of the standard tools in blender in the next tutorial i'm going to be using those same tools and adding to them to create these flamer canisters plasma cells and fusion cells so if you're not already subscribed to the channel hit that subscribe button if you like the video please do hit the like button it really helps share it around and if you want that video ahead of time it's already up on the Patreon, where patrons get these videos a week ahead of time, ad free and other great perks as well. For example, in the higher tier on the Patreon, a file with all these objects has already been made available for patrons to use in their personal or even commercial projects. So if you're interested in that, do check it out. There's a link in the description to the Patreon. Have a great day, guys.